So a few years ago we got to see Revival which was a disaster. Um, it is an album that obviously nobody recommends and is labeled as one of the worst albums a decade apparently by Anthony Fantano which I kind of have to agree with. And then the next year we got Kamikaze which was an okay album. It wasn't as bad as people said it was. I think it was just okay. It was a huge improvement in Revival. Fast forward to 2020 we got Music to be Murdered by and this album is a slight downgrade from Kamikaze. I mean, don't get me wrong, there are some tracks here that I like, but Music To Be Murdered By, the title by itself should be ironic, because there are barely titles that, I guess, can have like that horror murderous theme. I could get a more horror murderous theme by just listening to a whole clipping album. It is more scarier than listening to this album as Eminem wants to present it. The first track, Premonition. Now, here's the thing, I am still confused by this um, title, the track, because I'm thinking, what premonition is he trying to say? Like, because premonition is when something, we have a feeling that something's about to happen, and I'm, I'm thinking to myself, well, what premonition does he think is going to happen? I'm, I'm just still trying to analyze it. But anyway, in this track, he talks about revival being a flop, but still making a lot of money and still getting like a billboard um hit and all that stuff which is pretty surprising for a flopped album but yeah he talks about more about revival and all name drops a lot of people the mgk this and all that stuff and yeah the the track actually opens up with these vocals that sound like a dark souls final boss fight yeah that's like the best comparison i can do to the beginning and then it transitions to an accommodating with a young ma feature which i which i think her Verse wasn't necessarily that great. I think it could have been better, it's just okay. But really the thing that saves the track here is Eminem with his rapid flow and that hard beat that he raps over. Mostly like talking about all the things that is an accommodating for him in that situation and all. And then it transitions into You Gonna Learn with Royce the Nine if I'm correct. And it's actually a pretty um, cool track. I think the thing that I really like about that track was its production because I like when the, the chorus part gets in there, the drum break just gets like stereo and this fill of reverb and it starts panning left to right and just everywhere really in the vocals as well. I thought it was a pretty cool effect and also like the drum break glitches and all that stuff. Then we got those kind of nights, so I'm correct. And how can you transition from like a banger track to a crappy track? I mean, no offense. The Ed Sheeran um, verse was super generic. I felt like it just didn't need to be there and I thought Eminem's lyrics are not even that special in that track. He started talking about, you know, like when uh, Eminem that he goes in different bars and all that stuff and he's drunk and he's meeting all these type of um, girls that some of them are fans but they're not really fans, they just want to be with him because he's famous and all and just talking about all these awkward situations I guess you could say. And then just to bring back that horror vibe, there's an interlude of, the Alf of an Alfred H um, Hitchcock sample which I think I think it already lost its groove already by just introducing like a pop dance uh, hip hop trap type of um, song and then just trying to it into like a horror vibe it doesn't make sense because that one is like more dancing and club like and you just don't transition like that it's just pretty bad how they transition it and then we got into deep into deep was more of a relationship uh, type of song this is definitely better than than uh, those kind of nights it's more, I guess, serious, more tone, kind of saying that um, he's in a relationship where he is not feeling comfortable, and there's a girl that he met that she's not feeling comfortable with um, her uh, boyfriend. No, just not really in like the right space. They don't feel like they're right. They don't feel like they're together really. And Eminem feels that he needs to he needs to be with her together. But uh, yeah, I think it's a pretty cool beat. It has like this R and B type of feeling in the chorus part, like like these vocals that sound soulish, you know. So yeah, the next track, Godzilla. Godzilla is like probably the funnest track in here. What makes Godzilla really cool is how he plays with its flow at the end. And also the metaphor that he's like a, that he's a monster and he's gonna uh, swallow it up and all that stuff. Cause I'm pretty sure he probably took some sandings or something and he feels like he's a 
huge monster. He's high and all that stuff. And yeah, I think the Juice World um, um, chorus, I think, was okay. It wasn't like his best chorus of all time or anything. I thought it was just okay, but still respect for Juice World out there. Rest in peace. Uh, I like the fast rapping part where she goes basically rap mode. And, it's a, and apparently, there have been some reports that it's actually faster than Rap God, which is surprising. Then we transition to Darkness. And Darkness, I think, is a pretty distinct track. It's a more serious toned down track with just like some dark piano playing. And I think the Hello Darkness, my old friend, has to be sampled. Uh, we hear Eminem talking in perspective of Shooter, like the Vegas Shooter, and mostly about his issues, his suicidal issues, his depression issues of him taking pills and all. I think it's a pretty refreshing take from Eminem to like just narrate a point of, of view of a shooter. And uh, yeah, I think it's a pretty decent song and it ends with these samples of these new support of the Las Vegas shooting and some other school shootings and all that stuff. Next track, we got Leaving Heaven. Leaving Heaven, I think, was all right. The drums kind of rem rem reminded me of Believer <laughs> a little bit. Uh, I think the vocals are, man, I just don't necessarily get the whole Leaving Heaven. I don't get the whole Leaving Heaven type of thing. Is he like, like just done with heaven or something? I, I just didn't necessarily get the message of that song. I think M's, M's verses were okay. It wasn't necessarily that special or anything the next track yeah yeah which future features q-tip black thought and i think royce the nine but yeah it was a pretty fun track it has like this um yeah 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 stuff and yeah i think it's pretty fun how all of them just rap over this uh this weird sample you know with these hip-hop drums and we got stepdad stepdad is it reminds me of like this 14 year old well not 14 now uh, like this 12 year old edgy kid who literally just hates his stepdad because literally the chorus section just says I hate my stepdad. I hate I hate my stepdad. It sounds weird. It just sounds childish kind of but I get the whole point of the song that his stepdad abused him or something. Eminem um, allegedly poisoned his stepdad because he had it. He was not having it and just beat him up and I think he killed him and apparently buried him next to a chihuahua. This probably like exaggerated, but he probably I did have like an abusive stepdad, but I don't think he necessarily killed him. But yeah, it was, it's a dark song, but I think the chorus segment ruins it. I think it was a little bit just childish. So yeah, let's just get to the next track, which is Marsh. Marsh is okay, but the chorus kind of weirded me out that Martian and like all these effects together, I think there wasn't necessarily nothing great for night track i think it was just kind of plain i think it was a little bit weird in never love again we got a, another love song from eminem i think this one was okay not as good as uh other tracks that he's done it, it's not necessarily like as good as in too deep but it's still fine i just kind of feel like it wasn't necessarily if, if, it, if it wasn't in the album it wouldn't make a huge difference i mean it's really like an okay track now with little engine i think it was a pretty cool like hunting beat but i think the chorus section that little engine go i think i was like a little bit just repetitive and i don't know just it it was kind of boring for me it just didn't do it for me and yeah overall the songs okay there are like loads of okay songs here like there's not that many trash songs it's just most of the project is just meh okay but uh yeah this song was it wasn't for me now lock it up with anderson pack i think that song was actually quite a banger i liked um the rhythmic flow that has anderson pack and the that chorus that's like um catchy you know i, I like how he can just do so many things on that chorus and the verse and the hook and all that stuff it's just really fun to listen to and also eminem's verse i think this one is just a really fun track farewell farewell is this track that just reminds me it just makes me think of eminem like he listened to one track of like reggaeton or something like that the track is with these chords these major um, repetitive chords these happy chords that are playing again and he sings like in this pattern that reminds me of reggaeton influence and this like synth lead that it just makes it even more obvious but yeah i just didn't like that song it felt generic it felt just weird for Eminem to rap on. No Regrets was a track that I think was actually pretty decent. I had, to, I had a decent uh, Don Tolliver uh, chorus and the Eminem version was pretty good. I just, there's one line that I'm a little bit confused 
where he apologizes to Tyler Creator and Arrow Sweatshirt because he dissed him in Kamikaze. But at the same time, this thing is called No Regrets. So you're regretting something and no regrets. It's like a little bit weird. But maybe I could be wrong. Let me know in the comments down below. I'll probably just re-listen to this um, song maybe and just look more on the lyrics. Maybe I was just wrong. And for the next track, I Will, which is... A really fun track it has like a lot like a lot of these features together i think it's a pretty um chill boom bap uh type of laid down um beat that, that they're rapping on i think it was okay it wasn't necessarily anything that just caught my attention a lot but i think it's an okay track if you like boom bap i guess um type of beats with a lot of rap rappers and then i just i'm in a solid m and verse but yeah the last track is the outro which Alfred says that if you haven't been murdered by, well, maybe next time you're gonna be murdered by it. And if you are murdered, sleep tight or something. Like a really weird sample that they put in the end. But yeah, that was the whole end, the whole album that I just covered on. I think it's it was me, kind of mediocre. It's like half half, really. Or like 50 50 here. Because there are some decent tracks, as I said here in this video. But at the same time, they're low. There's like some tracks that are just unnecessary to put in here and there are loads of like meh tracks that were unnecessary and this album could have been way shorter and I'm, I probably could have liked this more but uh, yeah what would I give music to be murdered by aside it has like some pretty odd features but most of them do land pretty well I mean the odd the, probably the oddest feature I saw here was Juice World because I never would imagine a million years Juice World collaborating with Eminem and also Don Tolliver. So yeah, my score for this album would be a, a 5 out of 10. So anyway, did you guys like this album? Did you hate it? Let me know in the comments down below. Let's have a discussion here. Leave a like in this video. Subscribe, turn the notification bell, and I'll see you next time.